good afternoon everyone good afternoon sir okay today is lecture number 7 of this uh, heat treatment class and uh, as we have earlier discussed about those strengthening mechanisms first of all we have discussed about those uh, strengthening mechanism due to grain refinement that means by refining the grain size we are increasing the strength of the material which is one of the best way uh can anybody remember uh, grain refinement is one of the very interesting uh, thing to increase the strength of the material and uh, com- if you compare the grain refinement with other techniques what is the main difference or what is the main advantage we will get what kind of advantage will get by refining the grain size apart from increasing the strength Okay, the hint is uh, when you increase the strength of a material, the ductility reduces in the materials. Uh, sir, by doing grain refinement, we can also improve the toughness of the material. Very good, very, very, very good. So, grain refinement is one of the best technique to increase the strength of the material because by reducing the size of the grain, also we are increasing the toughness of the materials. Because if you look into other different techniques of strengthening mechanism, in those cases, what happens? with increasing in the strength the ductility uh, get reduced to a large extent due to which the toughness become poor the toughness also reduces but grain refinement is a technique which increases the strength and increases the toughness of the material which is very important can you tell me where uh, toughness is a important property in which applications or in which environmental conditions toughness is very important in which conditions toughness is important okay let me write it here condition like environment so low temperature is important okay fine how low temperature can you justify that so because if we increase the temperature then we are obviously getting high ductility but at low temperature ductility is not that high so for toughness if toughness will be high so ductility will low be low temperature more. means what do you mean at room temperature or no below below room temperature below room temperature uh, it may be how much approximate so uh, minus Minus ten, minus four, minus twenty degrees Celsius. Okay. <laughs> applications. Okay. What about applications? In which applications, toughness is more important? Sir, rolling forging. Rolling forging. Who told rolling forging? Sir, cold work. cold working how cold working toughness is important that is uh, ro- rolling and forging are applications or they are different processes applications means end use i am talking about the end use where you will use 
the materials where toughness is a important property the materials should have rolling forging are different tech processing methods where we deform the materials and we'll produce thin strips or thin plates channels i sections edge sections many things we produce but i am talking about the application area automobiles automobiles yes very good automobiles many times i have told you in ipm also automobiles how automobiles so because we want both ductility and strength here yes but how <laughs> application area means what is the condition you are talking about like you talked about temperature when temperature reduces i will tell that soon okay but what about this why in automobiles you understand the definition of toughness and previous class also i told you about toughness also you have the slides you with you you might have gone through that also so definition itself is saying what is the need of ener energy absorption you so say it won't fracture or rupture yes it won't fracture easily but in yes. which condition it will not fracture high strain no 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 high strain when there will be a impact Yes. Where there will be an impact, obviously, because you are driving a car, you don't know where some another car will come and it will may hit your car at any moment. Or the uh, sometimes people get drunk and they drive fast and the they move at some moment they can uh, just uh, what bump into another uh, house, right? So it is a uh, sudden impact force will be acting on the body, and the and the car body may. what it may crack and and a uh, severe accident may happen some people may die obviously okay let me ask others i don't know if people are getting uh, you are having a better understanding or not amish can you tell me again uh, in which case toughness is important sir automobiles when there is will be an an impact or accident Yes, that is automobiles part. Anyways, any other? Uh, okay, fine. At what conditions? Any specific conditions? Environmental conditions where toughness is a important property. So Lakesh Bia is requesting to join. Okay. Okay, Arunima, can you tell me in which conditions toughness is an important property? Which environmental conditions? Uh, sir, wherever we need to give support and like we cannot afford fracture or support. You are condition. talking about any constructional, constructional thing? Yes, sir. Probably. Con constructional thing. We need strength. Why we need toughness? in constructional area we need strength we should have a high yield strength that's all that is enough in the previous classes we discussed there is a limit of safety or safety limit where we design a material on the basis of yield below the yield strength the the stresses acting on the material should be below the yield strength right or the yield strength should be very high okay ipsita uh ipsita mishra can you tell me in which environmental conditions toughness is a important property sir can you repeat the question in which environmental conditions toughness is important property in a material somebody has told earlier also the few minutes before somebody have told environment you understand what is the meaning of environment normal atmosphere i am talking about yes sir so yes, yes huh. sir ha uh, so which in which condition uh
forget about the corrosion hmm yes, in environment sir. we can have a corrosion anyways we are not talking about that corrosion and all what kind yes, of sir. what kind of things are there in your environment sir uh, the uh, sir whether the, it's uh, uh, ph is leaning more towards acidic or basic no no i am not talking about anything about corrosion corrosion is a different okay. area or different Sorry. failure i'm talking about environment normal environment have pressure and temperature that's all yes the pressure sir. is fixed pressure is changing pressure is not changing so much if you go to a yes. high altitude that is different thing but the yes. only thing is the temperature yes now can you tell me which which environmental conditions toughness is important acha what is the definition of toughness uh sir toughness refers to um <clears throat> yes Have you attended sir, the previous previous ability lecture? to observe yes. the energy and physically deform without fracturing? Okay, fine. Ability to absorb energy. Okay, fine. Now, can you tell me? Yes. Okay. Do you people have heard about uh, ductile to brittle transition temperature? Have you ever heard about this? Ah. Uh, Pratiksha. Okay, fine. Pratiksha. Pratiksha, can you answer this? Have you ever heard about this term, ductile to brittle transition, or DBT? Okay, Nikhil. Nikhil. Pratiksha, you are present. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am present, sir. So why you are not replying? I am. I am not sir, getting why you are not. Sir, I was trying actually. Mike was. I don't know, sir. What was happening? Okay, to fine. Can, can you can do you have any idea about ductile to brittle transition? Sir. So... Yes or no? Just tell me. I'm I'm don't want anything more. You have heard no, about sir. this term? No, sir. Okay, Pratishika, have you ever heard about this term? Um. Yes, sir. Sir, at low. Yes, temp- obviously yes, in DVM, right? DVM, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, very good. Yes, very good. So, so can you answer what is that? So that uh, low temperature, some metal uh, which were initially ductile become brittle. Very good. Very, very good. good. Very good. Okay. Very, very nice. Very nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mute yourself. So you okay, Sagar? Uh, can you tell me, uh, Sagar? You are there, Sagar Sahu. Yes, sir. Yes. Ductile to brittle transition happens at what condition? No idea. Sir. No idea. So ductile to brittle temperature, sir. I have yes, never yes. heard, sir. You have never heard? No, sir. Your ductile friend, to brittle, sir. Friend, I was. Your same batchmate is saying she has heard in DVM, and you are saying you haven't heard. How this yes, is possible? We, we have read, man. Sir, ductile different, but brittle. Okay, fine. Uh, Saloni, uh, can you tell me uh, uh, at what conditions a steel become brittle? Saloni, you are there. Saloni, you are there, or see if you don't respond, then you will be remain absent on that class. You might be present physically, you might be present over here, but you will be absent, right? Okay, Samrat. Yes, sir. Samrat, can you justify this one? Ductile sir, to brittle transition. Yes. Sir, at low temperature, sir, it is. Uh, what happens at low temperature? Sir, at low temperature, uh, some materials which are ductile uh, act as brittle. At w- low temperature means what exactly? Low temperature. Sir, uh, zero degree means uh, zero degree Celsius or something. Zero like degree that. Celsius. Zero degree Celsius. Okay, fine. I will move to uh, Kashmir right now. So, my, uh, do you think my material become uh, brittle? my aluminum become brittle in that temperature uh sir i don't know sir sir i think sir, sir low temperature so i told sir zero degree celsius okay fine okay let me answer this one ha huh? in which conditions or environment uh, toughness is a important property see toughness is a very important property in a material because we don't want our fracture to get propagate right suppose f- 
suppose for example a impact force is acting on the material right during certain applications hmm so what will happen if a sudden impact will impact means a sudden heavy load is acting on the materials huh? or uh, uh, like a sudden collision is happening right so what happens the material should absorb that energy of that impact right the material should have a property that it should absorb that lot of energy sudden energy it should absorb in the materials if it can absorb that energy within it there will be only plastic deformation will happen but if it cannot absorb that energy it will get fractured the crack will form and it will easily propagate throughout the materials or it may propagate to certain extent i think you people have understood this one yes or no yes sir very good so the best example i can give you is uh how many of you have seen uh, the movie titanic how many of you have seen i think everybody have seen that movie yes sir yes. yes very good you have seen every i think everybody have seen that movie titanic uh okay fine let me ask yeah apurva 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 can you tell me what is the main uh, uh what happens to the uh, that ship titanic ship at the end of the movie or just before the end of the movie what happens to the ship apurva apurva am i audible to you Okay, Vishwajit, can you tell me what happens to that ship? Okay, Apurva, you are absent, I think, right? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, Apurva is absent. Okay. Apurva, you are there? Okay, fine, you are absent. Okay, Vishu, what happens to the ship, Titanic ship, before the end of the movie? Sir, at last the ship yes. drowned into the sea. Very good, very good. It, it, it gets drowned. Ah, very good. So why it get drowned? What is the main cause of that? What happens? I think uh, due to brittle nature of the ship. Yeah, due to brittle nature. But what uh, happens that leads to the uh, drowning? What um, happened to the ship? It is easily. Sir, ice box is going to drop. Okay. Yes, very good. It it collide with an iceberg. Yes, very good. So what happens when the moment it collide with the iceberg? What happens to the ship? Sir, it broke into two parts. It's broke into two parts. Are you sure it broke into two parts? Some cracks are generated. <laughs> Just look at the movie again, please. I suggest you please go through that movie. That is completely linked with our metallurgy, right? so in earlier days what happens nobody have any idea about this uh, ductile to brittle transition temperature so there is a particular temperature if you go below that temperature what happens your ductile materials will become brittle and we if you remember we never want material to fail in a brittle way we always want our material to fail in a ductile way because if the material will fail in a brittle way the crack will easily propagate throughout the materials once once there will be any flow or once there will be any uh, crack initiation it will easily propagate but if there is a ductile one what happens it will first deform to a large extent before fracture right so that what happens exactly when the ship was in a very severe cold environment already the materials become brittle the ship is made up of steels right so steels become brittle now and it collides with the iceberg so what happens a crack initiates easily and it propagates to certain extent so what happens the water will go into the ship and the ship get drowned that is the reason so that is due to ductile to brittle transition only so that means the toughness of the material has reduced to a large extent due to this ductile to brittle transition right hello sir yes 
sir so then what is the exact temperature for ductile to brittle transition that is that is that you can go through the literature so you can you can get the answers right because different materials have a different ductile to brittle transition temperature it is basically as sivasi told below like you can go below 20 minus 20 minus 30 like that right that means more below you go more that means if you reduce the temperature more and more if you are going to the minus minus and minus the metal become more brittle and more brittle and more brittle right okay sir right it is not like 0 degree or like 5 degree it is enough or minus 5 minus 10 is not so a low temperature if you go minus 20 minus 30 like that minus 40 it will become more brittle right so in that case toughness is very important so that's why nowadays the ships which we design they have a good toughness value they can absorb the uh, impact energy which on collision right they will not crack easily which happens with the titanic right so another case is sivasi stole also in auto automobiles in automobiles as i told you you are driving a car but the moment suppose you uh, collide with a tree for example so the the moment you collide the car should absorb a lot of energy of the collision if it cannot absorb the energy it will uh, crack into two to three pieces and you might you might die or i might die if i am driving right it simply should deform the car should deform simply without um, a fracture right so that is the toughness which play an important role over there i think you people have understood right now shall i write or you people can explain it well you people have understood the point yes sir yes sir so that is why that is why the significance of what that is why the significance of what do you remember why grain refinement is important in low temperature now you people understand in the previous class i told you in which case uh, more grain size is required in which case low grain size is required or finer grains are required you understood right now i think yes sir Okay, very good. So here you can write here if you want, huh? Already I have written here constructional material, automobile bodies, and uh, you can write uh, like your ship ship materials, which uh, which basically goes into the very low temperature environment, like Arctic or Antarctic kind of things. Hmm. Okay, very good. You people have understood well. Then uh, yeah, you could write it over here. I am not writing. I have. so next is uh, suppose okay now uh, we in the previous class we have discussed about interaction between point defect and dislocations right dislocation is a line defect and point defects are vacancies your solute atoms it may be interstitial solute atom it may be substitutional solute atoms they are interacting with dislocations and finally what happens we can get a strengthening mechanism that is called solid solution strengthening so already i have written here huh solid solution strengthening in steels or crystal materials but what are the other consequences or what are the other phenomenon huh? what are the other few phenomenon we can see we can also see upper yield point phenomenon huh we can also see strain aging hmm we'll see that soon so upper yield point okay fine uh, do you people have seen the stress versus strain plot for a mild steel how many of you have seen let me see How many of you have seen the stress versus strain curve of mild steel? Nobody have seen. Amrita, have you ever seen a stress versus strain curve for a mild steel? No, sir. Okay. Uh, in DVM class, uh, okay, sir might have talked to you about something about stress versus strain curves. acha avay bhushan avay bhushan have you seen the stress versus strain curve for a mild steel or low carbon steel avay avay you are there avay bhushan you are there or you are absent okay you are absent then Okay, Vishant. Okay, anyways, Avishek, Avishek Mohanty, have you ever seen? Yes, a, sir. 
have you ever seen a plot between stress versus strain car plot uh, plot of mild steel yes sir okay very good where where we have seen in dbm i think or where in which subject sir in uh, yes sir in dbm okay very good uh, what about acha alok kumar yes sir have you ever seen a plot between uh, stress versus strain plot between this uh, for a mild steel yes sir okay fine so what what is the interesting uh, thing you have seen in that condition if you compare a plot of stress versus strain for a mild steel and a uh, and a for example aluminum case what what difference will get Okay. Mr. In mild steel, there is an upper yield point and the lower yield point, and yield elongation, yield elongation is there also. Okay, very good. What about uh, what about in case of uh, aluminium? Sir, no yield elongation, and uh, means yield uh, point is a single point. There is no upper lower yield point like that. Okay, fine. Very good. Well, uh, yeah, Alok, Alok, can you tell me what you can see in a mild steel plot? Hello, hello sir. Yes, Alok, can you tell me what what interesting thing you are you can able to see in a mild steel when you are drawing a stress versus strain curve? Yeah, uh, more plastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about the plot. In that plot, what you can able to see? So there is a large yielding. Large yielding is there. Also, what is the meaning of yielding? Stress at uh, with deformation or plastic deformation. Uh, okay, so plastic deformation is called yielding. Okay, very good. So, uh, large yielding is seen in case of mild steel. But what about aluminium? We cannot able to see large yielding. Okay, Siva Prashad Sahu, can you tell me what what we can able to see in a mild steel plot? Siva Prashad Sahu. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. What we can able to see in a mild steel plot? Sir, I think stress we can stress. see a uh, upper yield point and a uh, lower yield point in a uh, mild steel. Yes. Stress. Uh, well, ap apart from that, what we can, what we see? Okay, upper yield point and lower yield point, as uh, Panda told. Okay, anyways. Well, apart yes, from that, what we can see? And. Uh... Sir, I don't know, sir. I don't remember. Okay. Yes. Can anybody uh, from you can tell me anybody want to speak something about the stress versus strain plot for mild steel? Few people have told about that upper yield point and lower yield point. Anything else? Fracture point. Fracture point. Sir, obviously, at said... the end of the. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Sir, sir. Saracens, we can able to see very good. Saracens, yes, yes, very good. Saracens, I want that answer only. We can able to see Saracens. So, what is that Saracens? Sir, the fluctuating value of uh, low means yeah, stress. Yeah, fluctuating value of the yes stress. Yes. Sir, sir, Ludo's band. Ah, uh, those are called Ludo bands. Yeah, he he know something. Yes, very good, very good. See uh, why I am discussing all these things because uh, definitely some day uh, in interview they will ask to draw a stress versus strain plot for a mild steel. You cannot avoid that. That is very important. Hmm. Okay, so you understand here due to this interaction between point defect and dislocations, one is the solid solution strengthening. But another thing you can able to see is upper yield point, right? 
as panda told also we can able to see lower yield point okay since upper yield point is there obviously that's why we are moving into the lower yield point also right so which happens in mild steel slow carbon steel basically it also uh, we can able to see in some aluminum alloys like aluminum magnesium alloys we can able to see in some um, uh, plastics huh? and some metals uh, other metals like uh, your uh, cadmium sometimes we can able to see those things huh? now we'll discuss that today so before moving into that let me show you some nice plots where we can able to see this okay so can you people uh, figure it out what this plot is showing which kind of strengthening mechanism or uh, what is it showing let's look at the plot and tell me let me see who can figure it out quickly solid solution strengthening yes solid solution strengthening what kind of solid solution strengthening it is showing i mean what is happening here sir as the nickel weight percent increases we can see that uh, yield strength is also increasing increasing okay can you give an example of uh, alloy of a nickel how many of you people how many of you have remembered that isomorphous phase diagram yes sir copper nickel copper nickel yes very good copper nickel that means we have a copper suppose here copper is there here we are increase here nickel is 100% here copper is 100% you are increasing the weight percentage of nickel so what is happening here you can see the tensile strength is increasing right right you are everybody understood now the moment you are adding more amount of nickel into the copper the strength of the alloy is increasing the yield strength is increasing it is in mega pascal mpa huh? so similarly what is happening here the yield strength is increasing in here right the moment you are increasing nickel the weight in the copper the strength is yield strength is increasing this is the tensile strength is increasing right but what happens to the ductility can you people see decreasing obviously ductility will de decrease because always yield strength and ductility are inversely proportional basically hmm you can see the ductility is going down with increasing the nickel percentage so this is one of the best example where we can see solid solution strengthening hmm. okay so we will talk about this yield point phenomena hmm. yield point phenomena and or we can say this is actually a stress versus strain plot or here it is actually latent load versus elongation so here load instead of load you can write stress instead of elongation you can write strain so this is a stress versus strain plot or load versus elongation plot for a material which shows yield point phenomenon hmm. so in case of yield point phenomenon means we will be having a upper yield point and we will be having a lower yield point right so there will be a distinguish between upper yield point and lower yield point you can see this one when we increase the load right there is be elongation but one at a point at a particular load or at a particular stress value will be having a upper yield point no, this is the upper yield point you can see but in normal stress strain curve we only see a single yielding is happening there is no other any yield point only one yield point or you can say there will be no distinguish upper and lower yield point but after some times when the load will be more At, at this value of load when the load will be higher more higher you can see there is a drop actually what happens we should write here stress versus strain huh so stress is maximum over here but when the load will be more and more the stress is going down you can see there is a fall in the stress and it will fall to a particular stress level that stress level is called the lower yield point so this is a lower yield point so initially the stress is very high but after some time the stress is going down and becoming and reaching to a particular limit so that is called lower lower yield point so this point is the lower yield point and this is the upper yield point so after it happens what happens we can able to see serrations these are serrations up and down up and down right these are called serrations serrations in the materials or serrations in the plot this is a plot showing many serrations huh? 
that means some rise and drop some rise and drop in the stress the stress is increasing then de uh, decreasing stress is increasing then decreasing it will go like this up to a large extent hmm. from here to yes sir yes sorry okay it is not moving now it is okay now 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 is moving yes okay okay fine fine so basically you understand this is load versus elongation curve actually we should write stress versus strain plot so you can see uh, when the load is increasing we are reaching to a maximum load or you can see maximum stress is here so this sir, point is the upper yield point don't uh, present sir the cursor is hiding while presenting okay okay anyway so now this is visible yes sir yes okay fine uh okay just look at this point huh the load is increasing similarly you understand the stress will increase in this direction right so at a particular load you can have a maximum stress here you can see from this point so this point will have a maximum stress so this is a upper yield point so after reaching upper yield point you can see again the load required to elongate the material is decreasing or you can say the stress is decreasing it decreases to a particular point here so this point is the lower yield point so we have a upper yield point we have a lower yield point and after reaching lower yield point you can see there will be a small fluctuations the stress again increase then decrease then again increase and decrease again increases decreases but this increase and decrease is not so high like this hmm. so there is a increase and decrease in the stress value like this small small mountains you can say mountain and valley mountain and valley like this right so these are serrations called technically called serrations and if in the materials we call formation of luder band and you can see there is a luder this is a luder band is forming hmm. formation of luder bands actually this whole thing looks like this actually here so this luder band forms and it get propagated in the materials you can see the luder bands is propagating and propagating and it is consuming whole materials once luder band has formed and propagated and consumed the whole materials what happens at this point strain hardening will start the metal will start and become hardening like this the stress stress will increase and increase and increase finally it will go to the maximum limit uts and again it will drop and finally it will fail right so before strain hardening we can able to see some serrations in the serrations in the plot Hmm. and we can able to see the formation of luder bands in some particular area of the materials and it is propagating you can see it is propagating with the this direction elongation direction fine right? and finally it will consume the whole materials once the whole material will be consumed by this luder bands then what happens suppose from this point strain hardening is seen and this part is called yield el elongations some people call luder elongations also from the here to here okay you can see in a materials how it looks these are luder bands how luder bands looks like in a materials Just look at this image right actually these are stretch stretch marks you can see stretch marks hmm. Hmm. these are stretch marks basically or stretcher some people call stretcher strain marks hmm. you can see here what is happening this red part is luder band propagating in this direction and in this direction just look at this one also again and the figure with nice figure we have this is upper yield point this is a lower yield point and these are serrations in this serrations you can see the stress is increasing and then decreasing the stress is increasing then decreasing the stress is increasing decreasing but there is no much increase in the stress like this after this point the stress increases to a large extent that means strain hardening is happening in this area and finally it reaches to the maximum value and finally it will drop and it will fracture so this is a very good diagram of a mild steel or low carbon steel stress strain plot hmm 
you can see you can see this image huh? how lunar bands are formed here a lunar band is forming here a lunar band is forming and they are propagating with the increasing in the stress huh? you can see they are propagating and finally the whole material has consumed by the lunar bands you can see this is a image of a specimen showing couple of lunar bands this is one lunar band this is another lunar band this is another lunar band this is another lunar bands okay fine uh, i'll stop here and i will explain again this one in the next class hmm. so i hope you people are uh, maintaining your uh, class notes properly and most